we stole a lot of the really good things out of Scum and kept them. We, we kept the idea of the chore tool, which I just called chortle, but they, they had cyst and bile and these, these, all these bodily humor flavored um, tools from Scum. Uh, cyst, bile, phlegm, mucus. And, <laughs> and we kept, but, the, but the, there are analogs, like the chore tool is the really big one, but it's the analog to what they did in cyst, which was the costume editor for all the other uh, adventure games. Mm -hmm. And we kept those paradigms, you know, they, they manipulate 3D elements and 2D elements and movies and things together on one timeline, but that really is harkening back to exactly what they were doing in the 2D game. So. Lucas is remembered for the, the great art and the funny writing and all of that, but it's all built on yeah, good just tech. amazing tech. Hey, Gladys was right. These do look better chromed. Hello, crew! Hmm, they know I hate it when they ignore me. All hands on deck! Everybody up here right now! This is a code red situation! This is not a drill! Be on the lookout for assassins disguised as customs agents. Hello? Is anybody there? Is anybody there? sprouted sailors but what happens to the souls when they're sprouted i was wondering that myself i, I think the idea was they take the flowers and bring them back to the land of the living <laughs> they like it's recycled ah uh, they get I never really thought they through. get reincarnated which yeah. is sort of what you don't want to do here ensign arnold was just a kid i'm not going to disrupt the evidence i'm sorry i led you into trouble sailor I'm sorry I led you into trouble. Oh, no. Deck Officer Glenn. This can't be happening. Hey, he's back here. Sack him. Custom officials, open this door! Yeah, we wanna check your bags. Don't worry, Captain. We're safe in here. Okay, let's just set the explosives and get the hell out of here. I wanted to also talk about, I think this was the, f I, this may have been the first game, it may not have, but at LucasArts that I can remember, where you walk the character around and procedurally his head, Manny's head is turning towards oh, right. points of interest. Yeah. Procedurally. As the first head tracking, right? At With a computer. LucasArts? Oh, it def at, definitely at LucasArts it was, for sure. I think that was because Tim didn't want to have like the UI highlighting stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or he wanted to try something new? Yeah, it, it was yeah. partial hint and partial probably red herring, right? Oh. Um, yeah. Like uh, just yeah. show the player that they're in the direct, point them in the direction of interesting subjects in the environment. And I mean, it shows you everything you can interact with and not everything you can interact with is a solution either, you know, so. There's no UI in this game, if, if anyone didn't notice and that was by, by design. Looks like the anchor's down. Can't reach. Can't reach. One way 
weird trivia fact about the world that I learned. I I was um, I saw a couple of Manny Calavera tattoos when I was at mm-hmm. PAX, and someone asked me why are there no Glottis tattoos? And I started googling and I couldn't find a single Glottis tattoo on the internet. I found many Manny tattoos, and so I don't know why Glottis. I'll just say that on the internet tomorrow. That there need to be, be yeah, more yeah, Glottis yeah. tattoos. I agree with that. Yeah. That's the throttle for the port side engine. Not picking that up. Scythe. I like to keep it next to where my heart used to be. Well, there you go. thinking back to the way that we all work together at LucasArts, you know, the way the different departments collaborated, you know, it was, everybody just assumed that uh, we were all rooting for each other and on the same team, and, and there was almost no sense of, of kind of trial period, or, or in, nowadays, and, and for a long time now in the video game industry, a lot of times when you are in a service uh, capacity, such as sound or audio, music, uh, there's really a vetting period where what you're presenting is being vetted by the directors and the producers and, and you need to hear back, you know, what did they think, or they can want to continue to work with us and that kind of thing. And that's fine, that's, that's the way the film industry is, and that's, that's, that's the way things are. But back then, especially at LucasArts, it was not at all like that. Everyone just wanted to be working together. It was all one team, everyone was facing in the same collaborative direction. and. Uh, achieving f- uh, fun results and I think that creates a, an atmosphere in which people feel comfortable creating and taking risks so it paid off I think it's hard to totally panic when you're wearing that little sailor suit no it's not not picking that up Gladys do something okay
Gladys, do something. Okay. Gladys, cover your ears. What was that? The dotted line, buddy. Snap out of it, sailor. Easy for you to say. You don't have lungs. Hey, you live without your heart once, so you can live without air for a little while. Just until I figure out what we're gonna do. The, um, the sort of whale sounds in the music are, um, overblowing on the contrabass clarinet. Yeah. Ray uh, Ralph Carney doing his little... That's the same thing with the, the birds that, that jump up at you and surprise you and squawk. We're underwater. We're not on the moon. Not blue yet. You all right? I'm a spirit of the land, Manny. Not of the sea. Hang in there, Manu. Beware, brave captain. Here in the darkest depths of the Sea of Lament dwell the most horrible monsters of all. The fearsome, murky demons of the deep will swallow you whole the instant you leave this pool of light. Heed my warning, or take one step forward and learn for yourself. All right, all right, I believe you. Just quit it with the creepy spirit of the land voice, huh? Here comes one now! Amigo! Huh? Who? Oh, geez, another shipwreck. You see? That's why I never travel by boat. So he's been... He, uh, this is like a play on uh, moth navigation. Like they say that moths fly into lights because they're, they're used to using the moon for... um navigation and they're not used to electric lights and so he's um used to using the moon for navigation but he's been distracted by this thing called the pearl and it's made him go walk mark in, march in circles all these years we've had a little accident think you could help us out depends on what kind of help you're looking for Could you take us to the Pearl? Ha! You don't believe those old stories, do you? You think somewhere in this ocean there's a gigantic pearl that shines so brightly it can be seen from passing ships? And that sometimes sailors so allured by its luster actually fling themselves overboard to dive for it and are never heard from again? Yeah, and I think it's right over... Blah! I've been walking this ocean for years. I ain't never seen it. Could we borrow that light for a second? Sorry, I'm kind of attached to it. <laughs> Could you send for help? Oh, sure. I promise to call for help at the next phone booth I walk by. What are you doing down here? Trying to get out of the land of the dead, same as everybody else. 
Why are you walking instead of taking a ship? Got sick of waiting around Rubicava for a boat. Figured it'd make better time this way. Why didn't I think of that? How do you know where you're going? See the moon over there? I just keep it on my right. That way I know I'm heading in a straight line. But oldest trick in the book. Is everything okay with your eyebrows? Them is barnacles, genius. I don't move fast enough to shake them, so they tend to pile up. I don't mind, though. They're the only company I got. <laughs> Ain't you, boys? How long have you been down here? Well, let me put it this way. I wasn't always this color. Shouldn't you have hit dry land by now? I'm trying to cross a big ocean here, Sonny. What do you know about it? I've already done it. In a boat. A boat? Don't talk to me about boats. What's the problem with boats? We had such a nice boat. Why is everybody always talking about boats? You got a perfectly good pair of legs. Why not use them, I say? Let me guess. You died in a boat wreck. A boat wreck would have been better than what happened to us. Led off course by bad equipment, lost for weeks, no food, no shelter from the sun. We'd started throwing the dead overboard. But then the sharks began following the boat. What happened in the end? What happened was, I learned three valuable lessons. Stay away from boats. When it comes to navigation, trust only the moon and the stars. And when there's only two of you left, never, ever go to sleep. How have you kept that light going all these years? Well, I found this coral, this glow-in-the-dark coral. Damnedest thing. Glows like a lightning bug and never seems to wear out. I had some of that once. Made a nice grappling hook. I don't think you had what I got, because I don't think you've been to the place where I got it. Where'd you get the coral? Edge of the world, boy. That's the only place it grows. No, really. The pearl is right over there. You poor sucker, that's the moon! Tell me you didn't come all this way out here to pearl dive the moon. <laughs> Could we tag along with you? Well, it's a long walk you're talking about. We don't have any other choice. Oh, all right then. Lift those knees, stick close to my light, and try to sing in key. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under some seaweed, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under some seaweed, no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under some seaweed. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Scare away sea, sea monsters. monsters yeah. yeah, I'm gonna, I'm let, gonna it let it shine. Scare away sea monsters. Scare away sea monsters. Yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. Scare away sea monsters. Yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. 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 I'm not gonna let you touch it. No, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm not gonna let you touch it. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Not gonna let you touch it. No, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Ship. That's just a trick the ocean plays on your mind, kid. Makes everything look the same after a while, like he was going in circles. Well, this isn't the kind of progress I was hoping for. Oh, well, the wet march of the soul ain't for everybody. Well, I don't want to break your stride there. Okay, see you around. Watch out for sea monsters. Who? These guys? They don't mess with old Chipito. I'm too bright for them. <laughs>
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. What am I supposed to do with this? Follow me. Where are you taking me? To the moon. Benny, is that... The Pearl! Ooh -wee! I knew I'd find her someday! I'm rich! 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 Shh! Something's happening. Benny, what's going on? like the way that thing's looking at us. That octopus is tracking us. I had no idea their eyesight was so good. You know, Tim's really into black velvet. Yeah. Um, and when I showed up my first day, first day of work, there was a black velvet uh, kind of canvas. I, I don't know what it was. It was like this uh, kind of like a, you'd get it, you'd win it at the fair kind of thing. And it was like the Grim Reaper on a motorcycle with Mount Fuji in the background with these eagles flying out of it. Yeah. And um, and it was just pinned to the wall above my desk on the project. And for the entire project, we really didn't talk much about it. It was just kind of there. And, uh, and then when I moved on to the next project after it, I left my desk exactly the way I had found it with the thing pinned up to the wall and the whole thing. And, uh, uh, and then Tim came and gave it to me. I, I still have it in my office right now. But he, he was like, that's the mural that binds together full throttle and Grim Vendango because it's the Grim Reaper on a motorcycle. Hey, I've got more important things on my mind than jewel theory. Not me! I can't get anywhere near the sub while that monster's guarding it. Still not blue. Does he have secret gills somewhere? We're underwater. We're not on the moon. Gladys, go down there and talk demon talk to that octopus. Heck no! I'm scared! I'm staying up here with you! Hey, Chipito, go for a swim, will you? You're drawing too much attention to us. Too bad! I'm sticking to you like the barnacles on my eyebrows, so don't even think of sneaking off with my pearl. I'll bet that light is what's attracting the octopus. Hey, hands off! Nothing inside Chipito's personal bubble but Chipito.
Hey, I've got more important things on my mind than jewel theory. Not me! Hey, lay off! Hey, lay off! Hey, where are you going? You can't leave me here all alone! Come back here! She's coming back. This is the part of the game I feel like is a lot more inspired by actually City of Lost Children. Children, yeah, right. Which was that came out around that time, had mm -hmm. a big influence on us. There's that's I think that's why we have a marching underwater diver too. Like there's a lot of scenes in City of Lost Children where there's a diver just marching mm -hmm. on the floor of the ocean. It just seems so dramatic and just has made the slow and steady pay, like um, slow and steady progress, but he was so heavy and th and thick. No flying fleas, though. No flying fleas. Getting a little blue around the edges. See any hint of that octopus swimming around here? No, but I can smell him. Nothing but dark waters that direction. One of the things with uh, Manny's head and the look at stuff was um, that really meant that you couldn't put a lot of inventory items very close to each other or limited the number of things in a room because even though you could toggle through and he would look at things kind of in sequence, it could get tricky on if you put like three things on a table. Was he looking at thing number one, thing number two, or thing number three? Um, so that was uh, an interesting thing because Lucas was known for... These adventure games were very dense. Yeah, lots of things to click on in the screen. And uh, you really couldn't do that here. But the game doesn't really feel lacking for it. I, I, I feel like that's that's filled in with dialogue. I mean, I mean, ultimately, you know, you'd have those Hunt the Pixel games, you'd have a million things, and you'd have to have one line for each thing. Mm -hmm. And with this one, it's more like there are fewer things, but there's more to say about each one, or more mm -hmm. context, or, you know, Manny kind of thinking to himself about things. It's a little more ruminating. So I think it, it adds to the character just in terms of how much you kind of understand Manny or empathize with him. I'll bet all these miners were brought here by that octopus. Well, at least it didn't eat them. Not picking that up. Lay down your tools. We're busting out of here. Man, if I had only gotten that book back from Terry, I could really start some trouble here. Lay down your tools! We're busting out of here! Man, if I had only gotten that book back from Terry, I could really start some trouble here. Gladys, I'm gonna sneak inside and look for Mechi. What if that octopus comes back while you're gone? Poke him in the eye and steal his sub. <laughs> Stupid octopus! Tim had the coolest office. He did. <laughs> it was filled with like tiki lights, and oh, it right. felt like you, it was like Christmas land. Not Christmassy, but it gave you that same feeling yeah. of decoration and uh, hominess. Yeah, I was gonna say warmth, yeah, hominess. 
There was a couch in there, which was always nice. Yep. And I think I probably overstayed my welcome in there a few times. Yeah. I think we all probably did. You, you never knew when you were, when you should leave because it was so much fun in there. But then it's like, oh man, he has work to do. Yeah. It's no one, <laughs> no wonder he had to work through the night. It's yeah. because we would we'd bother him his all the time. office was like going to Disneyland, and you just sit yeah. in there and talk on the couch and just want to be a part of this uh, this creation. I yeah. had some old game consoles in there, and I would go and talk classic games with him because he knew that I was an enthusiast as well so that was fun I think he should have made his office more boring <laughs> he did spend a lot of time in that office yeah. how's his office now I've seen pictures I think it's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's it's like a grown up version of that office maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's still got all his Rubik's cubes on his desk Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot he yeah. was a master of the Rubik's Cube. He is. Really? Yes. Don't challenge him. Well, I would never. Are the three stripes on the back of Manny's head, is that hair? No, it's just a lazy, lazy design element to match the, the front of his head. Oh, and the tops of his hands, remember? There's yeah. little stripes just on there, the, yeah. too. Day of the Dead decorations right yeah I never knew what it was I just thought it was cool mm -hmm. it's an Adidas homage man that ashtray is so fancy you could eat caviar out of it I only steal ashtrays from bars empty yeah, so I'm, I'm people you know a lot of people may know this already but for those that don't the the game is just a big pre-rendered picture there's no 3d geometry in the game that describes the walls and the the doors and the tables and and all the props that are in the game that's just a picture a painting that's drawn in the background uh, so somebody had to go in manually and kind of make what we call walk boxes, but they're in 3D space. They're like a little model that just describes in 3D space where the where Manny's allowed to walk. And if you turn the background off, they just look like they're floating in space. There's nothing there. And there's boxes for walking. There's boxes for shadows. There's boxes for triggers that um, uh, trigger like footstep sounds and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, the image you see on the screen when you're playing the game, um, there is no real geometry there. So getting getting the illusion that Manny can walk in between tables and bounce off of walls and, th and things like that is all smoke and mirrors. Mechi. Manny, what are you doing here? I wanted to see how your trip was going, Angel. I am your travel agent, you know. By the way, thanks for that bottle of champagne you sent me. It really hit the spot. You were headed for a trap. I was trying to warn you. Domino was using me like bait. I didn't want you to end up a prisoner here like me. Prisoner? Where's your cell? Or are you just sharing a bunk with the warden? If that's what you think of me, then why did you come here? Because this is where he belongs. Here, working for me. I knew you'd come around eventually. Right or wrong, Manuel Calavera is always with the winning team, right, Manny? That's why you're here now. I'm getting off this rock, and I'm taking all of these people with me. <laughs> Manny, there's no way off this island. I'm afraid you're stuck here in my little executive training program. See, I need you to take my place here, kid. I've got to get back to the city where the action is. Sorry, Manny, but I had to come in. My skin was getting all pruney. Him, I don't need. I'm gonna grind you to powder for that, Gaudon. Maybe later. But for now, let me just show you your new office. <laughs> Careful, BB. The new boss is waking up. That's the door to the cage. Duh! 
Angelitos is actually um the little children in the cage it comes from a term that it was a popular kind of um well it was traditional in, in Mexico to take pictures of your children if, even if they were died very young yes yes it's like photography of it's little a, dead it's children whole in genre. yeah it's I don't really... know if that happened in the states but it was it was definitely in, in Mexico Mexico that yeah I've seen those I think you and, showed them to me actually and I there the and the they use they the word they use for children when they when they're when they're young when they die is, is angelitos oh uh, yeah it's a dark dark game it is dark I'd like to pick them up and give them a big hug, but I'm scared to reach in there. <sighs> That's the door to the cage. Duh! Fly! Be free! Go by Domino! Leave us alone! If we get out again, he'll hurt Meche! Fine then. Stay in there. He is mean. Mm -hmm. I always thought those girls were so cute. I just had to, um, be mean to them. Like, once, um, when my sister got her tonsils taken out, she had big puffy cheeks. Mm hmm I remember my aunt came to visit, and she goes, Oh, you look so cute, I just want to be mean to you. And I, I never really, <laughs> I never really understood it until I, um, we had these little baby angels in the game. I just, oh, I just want to just terrorize them so you can get out your scythe and scare them and do all these horrible things. It's the, it's the it's Mr. Bill, sick. and it's mm -hmm. the Mr. B Mr. Hands and all of us. Mm -hmm. Hola, angelitos. I'll bite you, I swear to God! Please don't bite anyone else, Pugsy. That's why they put us in the cage in the first place. Why do you want to bite me? You're the mean new boss. Mr. Hurley said you were meaner than him. He said you had a bone saw. My name is Manny Calavera. What's yours? Mr. Hurley told us about you. You're the one who tricked Meche. Poor Meche. I didn't trick anybody. Mr. Hurley said he was supposed to take care of Meche, but you stole her case from him. Is that true? Meche's my friend. You can ask her. She talked about you before. Every time she says your name, she looks so sad. I don't know what you did to her, but you're gonna be sorry! What are you two doing in this cage? Making light bulbs. Look, we're working as hard as we can. Why don't you leave us alone? Listen, children, I'm here to help. There's really not much more room in here. Your hands are too big to make light bulbs. I'm here to help you get out of this cage. You can't do that. We have to stay here and take care of Meche. She'd be so sad here all alone. Sometimes we hear her crying, you know. My hands are not too big to make light bulbs. Then why don't you help? I just don't have any of those little tiny tools, that's all. Here, take my hammer. <laughs> Let me see if I can explain this whole thing to you. You see, I had this job, selling travel packages to immigrant souls. If I sold enough of them, I got to leave the land of the dead. Now, I was in a slump, and I really needed a fat commission, so... You're a bad man. Go away, bad man! Yeah, go away! You know, I really do want to help. Then why don't you? I'm in the Maritime Union. We can't do factory work. I don't know what those words mean. It means he doesn't want to help us because he's mean. My butt's too big to sit on one of those little perches. Um, I'm gonna tell Meche you said that word to us. I told you he was bad. On second thought, maybe I don't. We don't want to either, but we don't have a choice. I'm the one who's gonna take Meche out of here. What? You can't do that. Who's gonna take care of us? We'll be all alone. <laughs> hey, hey, don't cry, children. Please, stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why am I so mad at this? I'm here to help you get out of this cage. You can't do that. We have to stay here and take care of Mitchet. She'd be so sad here all alone. Sometimes we hear her crying, you know. Nice cage you have here. Mr. Hurley grew demon ravens with human heads in here. He said if we ever tried to get away, he'd send the ravens after us. And let them make nests out of our bones. You bite me and I'll sue your parents. Our parents? Our parents? <laughs> you're two bad little children. I'm glad you're in a cage. <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> you children just wait here and be brave little angelitos, okay? Okay. This is the tiniest little hammer I've ever seen. Oh, look, it's my Prince Charming. Are you back here just to insult me some more, or do you just want some ice for your head? See, I, I like that you still are not quite sure about Meche. That happens a lot in those noir in, oh, movies. Totally, the, it's like just like uh, the woman Casablanca. is like, wait, is she in leagues with a bad guy, or is she um, right. being controlled and being blackmailed by the bad guy? Yes, a testament to the fact that they're written by men. <laughs> Nervous laughter. <laughs> Come on, we're getting out of here. Trying to steal my commission from Domino again. Manny, don't you ever give up? I'm not after any commission. I just want to get us both out of here. Then why don't you just ask your boss for the day off? Can't believe you think he's my boss. He's my arch enemy. I think he's your boss. You think he's my boyfriend. We don't seem to have a good foundation of trust in our relationship, do we? I'm sorry I implied he was your boyfriend. I do trust you. Well, I'm not sure I trust you about that. But I'll tell you one thing that would convince me. Name it. Give me your gun. What? What makes you think I have a gun? You work for the most heavily armed organization in the land of the dead. Don't try to tell me they didn't issue you a gun. I don't work for the most heavily armed organization anywhere. You know, you're right. There are those rumors of that revolutionary army that's been stockpiling weapons. Actually, them, I work for. Manny, why don't you come back when you're willing to deal straight with me, okay? Hey, about that gun. Ready to hand over your heater? I would if I had one. Right. They didn't issue me a gun. What, are you on probation? I'm not buying this, Manuel. Manny, why don't you come back when you're willing to deal straight with me, okay? Hey, about that gun. Ready to hand over your heater? I would if I had one. Right. I think we need to talk. Start talking. You're the salesman. I have a lot of explaining to do. Save your breath. Domino's explained it all to me already. You have a lot of explaining to do. Uh, me? About what? Why did you take me out with that champagne bottle? I told you to stop you from falling into Domino's trap. If you had made it on that ship, then you would have ended up... Here? Yes. Why are you working for Domino? I do what he asks only to protect the children. Why are those children locked up in a cage? With the wings those angelitos have, they're the only things on this island Domino can't control. Hey, if they can fly, let's set the kids free to go get help. They can't fly that far, Manny. But they can fly circles around Domino, and they can bite pretty hard. <laughs> so why did you run out of my office? I felt so embarrassed, and you looked so disappointed in me. I couldn't stand it anymore. And what were you doing that whole year I was in Ubakawa? I was lost. What did you... I don't want to talk about that year, please. Has Domino hurt you in any way? Not as much as I've hurt him. Boy, can that guy take a punch. Okay, I'll lay off the questions. Great. 
Now if we could get you to just lay off the cologne. Hey, I'm a sailor now. We have to wear this stuff. Listen, Mechie. Manny, talking isn't helping right now, okay? chisel this is this scene is kind of actually right out of the fountainhead this really um this just i think it's gary is it gary cooper or um someone like that he's doing this super manly like drilling into this wall and um the, 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 the love interest of it comes over and like is watching him getting all aroused mm -hmm. in a kind of a 1930s kind of way and she's so right. mad that she's a, she's out she's out riding her horse and she slaps her riding car off onto her leg to show her frustration uh -huh. it's a hilarious scene but for some reason, I really like this, 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 this jackhammer that he's just going into this wall with. <laughs> and so it's here, and it's very similar erotic content here between Manny and Chapito. Yeah, it's like I can see the, uh, I can see the brotherly love. Freaking, freaking. Chapito seems a little overpowered by his choice of tools. Chisel. That was Gladys' job. Hold still. Torpedo! Huh? Who? Oh, you is it? Why, I oughta... Look at my eyebrows! Well, you really weren't standing in a very safe place. Well, neither are you right now, Amigo. Relax, we're busting out of here soon. We? We are done traveling together. I work solo, my friend, and I walk alone. Nice drill. Drill? This here is a cordless high-speed reciprocating chisel. And look, it's a bust off. They usually don't give these to the new guys. How'd you get a bust off? I'm connected, plugged in, and I had some booty to trade. Trade's the name of the game out here in the Big Reef. Booty? Where'd you get booty? It's all over the ocean floor. Jewelry, precious coins, you people and your fancy boats never know about it. Cause you just never stop and look. Give me some booty and I'll buy our way out of here. I traded it all for this beauty. You traded jewelry and precious coins for a power tool? It's a bust off. That tool looks a little overpowered for you. Overpowered? Nothing overpowers Chapito. If you say so. I want to trade something. Well, you came to the right place, Sonny. What you be needing? A gun. Ooh, that's gonna cost some. What do you got on you? Don't worry, you get used to it. When you got something worth trading, come see old Chapito. He'll do you right. Dylan Guard you. Yo, Pito, have you ever seen an authentic little chipper? A little chipper? No, I haven't. But I'd sure love to give it a test drive. Say, little chipper, you're okay. Ah, sweet Mary. I don't know how I'd get down there without this current taking me over the edge. One, one thing that was a little weird uh, on animating all this underwater stuff, when you animated a little section like Manny uh, jumping off the, the conveyor belt or climbing up a chain, or getting dragged along by a boat or whatever, you would always try to add that element of the physics of being underwater. Yeah. And then seeing the harsh contrast of when you're, uh, you're back in interactive mode and we're still using the same animation of him walking above water. Mm. It was, uh, 
hard for an animator to get over that. These little things you can't let go of. You would have had to do a whole new set of anims. Like. Yes. It's not good. And that, well, the other thing is, like, we may not have, that may not have been the, uh, the thing that would have stopped something like that. It could have even been, like, there would be too much code required to switch a system or something. Like, who yeah. knows what, what the reason was. Uh-oh. when I hit, but my head cracked open an aft panel here. I gotta tell you, Carnal, I thought you were dead. Oh, Manny, I've been having a great time. Listen. I ask you, is there an engine that can resist the love that's in these hands? Apparently not. I think this baby's our ticket out of here. Oh, yeah, good point. I was just wrenching it for fun, but your idea's good, too. I remember being really, see how their hands kind of clip through their sleeves? I remember being really annoyed by that as an animator, having to settle to do it, because you just, you couldn't, um, you couldn't get the poses or the lines you needed uh, without making things kind of collide. It's something we just had to kind of live with. <laughs> and something we still live with today. So that, that chain that's holding the ship, at one point we had to add joints to that because I think at one point it's animated and uh, it kept crashing and we couldn't figure out why and we eventually figured out that you couldn't have more than 99 joints in a, in a rig in Soft Image at that point and it had, not, it had like 100 joints or something. No, but again, again it's this funny thing when people you know, maybe see this stuff and they think of, of movies now that maybe look better but you know we were having to deal with a lot of limitations i'm actually really really excited to see the remastered version because you know you look at elements of this game that was made over 15 years ago and visually it still kind of holds up to games that you can see today so um curious about what it's going to look like after the double fine gets finished with it yeah. i think it'd be pretty special people nowadays would be like Tim the ideas you have here about this conveyor belt where you can switch directions and rip a chain with a scoop it's really complicated and we could eliminate a lot of work if we just cut this one puzzle but this is like no we went all the way and we fully implemented exactly what I hoped would happen the conveyor belt would reverse direction the chain would go up and down Manny would climb down and against the force of water mm -hmm. bunch up the chain this is all so complicated oh and you create a little loop 
I was like, this all makes sense in my mind, so the player will be able to figure this out. Like the way that you looped it over that um, boat. I don't even know if that would work. That's like, that's like when you whip a hose to like get it uncaught when you're watering the plants in the backyard and it gets, your hose gets caught. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Do a little whiplash effect, yeah. thing on this cruel island. I love the pulling the stocking down of the um, of the <laughs> of the leg bone being that was sexy. Our, That's our awesome. one um, cover in image. Yeah, what, was that a like a magazine, PC Games magazine? Oh yeah, I image? remember that. Yeah. But what is that from? That that this is kind of a, this is definitely it's a reference go, to Popeye. And also, uh, go ahead and scratch, right? Let's go ahead and scratch. And when, it's when the Humphrey Bogart in, in the in um, Maltese Falcon, not sorry, not Maltese, Big Sleep, Humphrey Bogart is meeting. Uh, Lauren Bacall comes into his office and she sits on his desk and she crosses her legs and she's scratching her knee. And the camera is mm -hmm. showing you this from an interesting angle, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, and then she and then she sees that he's looking at her scratching her knee and mm -hmm. she covers her knee with her dre dress. He mm -hmm. says, "Go ahead and scratch, go ahead right? And scratch." Um, I was thinking more of um, Popeye, olive oil, falls into cement, and she steps out of cement, and everyone's whistling at her because she has shapely legs, and oh, yeah. some, <laughs> the cement falls away, and she has olive oil legs. Oh, I <laughs> forgot that. That's, That's what I always think of when I think of the scene. There it is. Hey, about that gun. Ready to hand over your heater? I would if I had one. Right. Listen, Mechi. Manny... Talking isn't helping right now, okay? Good enough for me. What is? Oh, uh, the, um, the speed at which you're working. That's nice, Manny, but you're not my boss, so really I couldn't care less. Good. Excellent. Carry on. Mississippi. Oh, rusty anchor. Hey, Cheppy, check out the hosiery. Say, these are real silk. Where'd you find them? I've been wearing them the whole time. You too? Well then, here's your new best friend. Ah, my first Brautella gun. Is it loaded? No. Hey, bullets are hard to get. Da-dee-da-da! -da -da. Go to Mississippi! la dee da dee da da relationship without trust. 
true. A relationship without trust is about as empty as a gun without bullets. Guess you didn't realize a smart girl always keeps an extra round in her hat for mad days. Come on, let's go. Mitchie, you don't know what you're- I know exactly what I'm doing. Now move! Would you just listen to my escape plan first? Trouble in paradise, kids. You're letting us go right now, or your boy Friday here gets it. Well, I hate to see you go, Manny, but uh, the lady seems to have made up her mind. I'm serious. I'll shoot him. Fine. He really doesn't work for me anyway. But I thought he... I'll shoot you then. No, you won't. You're too good, remember? I'm not. I'm not good anymore. You've taken that out of me, keeping me a prisoner here. I'm gonna crack you open like a fake wing boss. I'm gonna... <sighs> Kid's all right. <laughs> She's a firecracker. But a night in the cooler usually dampens her fuse. Hear what he's listening. What, what is Domino listening to on his headphones? In your mind? Oh, he's. Li uh, it's. It's not just what is. He, we you can actually, actually hear have like him a little... listening. He's listening to his own theme, Burp. and it's and it's <laughs> it's um it's done as a headphone. Uh, we didn't mi mix it so it would sound like headphones. It's very quiet, but he's listening to his own music. <laughs> he seems completely unaware of how close I am to escape. Not picking that up, Domino. Domino! Taking your first coffee break already, Calavera? We got a score to settle, Lissy. You know, if I ever spoke to my boss, Hector, that way... I was gonna say about the music where he reveals the whole big conspiracy theory. That was a, that was a hmm. jam between the cello player and the, um, and the contrabass clarinet player. Oh, yeah. Basically, the idea was that since it's a whole, con a whole complicated conspiracy that you, they would just jam and jam forever on the same theme, kind of mm -hmm. weaving it out. Mm -hmm. What did you do with her? I thought she needed a little uh, time out, that's all. You killed my best friend. The demon? <sighs> Manny, you can use a demon as a driver. Let him carry your messages, let him serve you food. But you can't ever start thinking of them as friends. It's just not natural. What are you doing out here on the edge of the world? Oh, I know. I ask myself that every day. But I'm going to train you, Manny, to take my place here running this two-bit light bulb factory. How can you keep little children in a cage? Trust me, it's easier than keeping big kids in a cage. Why don't you just sprout me like you tried a Puerto Zapato? That wasn't me. That was Hector. He's so unimaginative, just wants to tie up the loose ends, you know? But I believe, however, that you can be rehabilitated through honest work. What makes you think I'm going to work for you? Well, there's not much to do on this island if you don't work, take it for me. And think about it. Once I'm gone, it will be just you and Meche alone on this deserted island. Don't tell me that prospect doesn't appeal to you. I don't plan to be on this island for very long. Manny, I have all the guns, I have all the transportation, and I have all the brains. What are you gonna do? You and Hector set up a secret hideout to make light bulbs? Oh no, that's just a side benefit. The real purpose is to have a place we can lock up all those old clients of mine. Can't have good people wandering loose in the land of the dead telling everybody how we stole their double-in tickets, now can we? You stole all these people's tickets? Okay, how much of this haven't you figured out, Calavera? Kapal would route all the good clients to me after he switched over their tickets to a secret holding fund. I'd cover up the paper trail, and we'd make sure that the pigeon jumped overboard at the pearl. I knew it! You were getting all the good clients. I handled them all, except for Mercedes, who you hijacked for me in that ridiculous hot rod, which I saw, by the way, last time I was in Rubicava. I tell you, Manny, hot rods like that just don't look safe to me. So it wasn't my fault Mecha didn't get a ticket. You stole it. Well, it's your fault she ended up in the forest instead of coming here right away, but I fixed that. 
One ticket for you, one for Hector. How many more do you need? Oh, Manny. We never touch the product ourselves. We sell a ticket to unfortunate souls, unable to lead moral lives because of the crippling amount of cash they were born into. But you could just take the tickets and leave today. We found a way to make the land of the dead livable. Why would we want to leave? Nice island you got here. Yeah, the previous owners didn't know what they had here. Let us pick it up for a song. They scooped out all the coral they could reach with their crane and then abandoned the plant. But we knew we had what it would take to go the extra distance to the big reef. Are you about to lecture me about the winning attitude again? No! Slave labor, Manny. That's the real ticket to success. I'm taking Meche out of this dungeon. Manny, before I found her, she spent a year out there in a petrified forest alone because of you. By comparison, I'd say I'm keeping her pretty comfortable here in my, uh, dungeon. Wouldn't you say? Well, I gotta get back to trying to escape. <laughs> hey, you do that, kid. Knock yourself out. Please put that away. Thank you. That too. Thank you. I'm warning you, Domino! If only I hadn't lost my union Domino, card in that poker you'd game. you better let me out of here! Not picking that up. Ooh, Manny. I bet I could pick that. If only I hadn't lost my union card in that poker game. Help! This should open it. I'm Must warning be a combination you, Domino! Lock, but there are no numbers on it. Poor Don was never good with numbers. I'm warning you, Domino! Bebe! Is there anybody out there? I'm in here! Hey! Ah! Let me out! Must have hit a major circuit. Hmm, but it looks like I've exposed the guts here. I can't move those by hand, I need this wheel. Mechi, you can come out now. Mechi? Uh, there was a, um, the elevator in my dorm that you could push open while it was moving. You push the gate open and freeze it in between floors and mm -hmm. hang out in the elevator for no reason. But there was a, a little, like a little, like strip of metal up in the corner that the door would plug into when it was closed to know that it was closed. And we tried to get the elevator moving with the door open. <laughs> By sticking, we're sticking our fingers in this thing, trying to trigger the little switch. I totally got electrocuted because it was like um, a live, actual electrical current in there. Instead yeah, of ouch. It. So that's where that comes from. <laughs> that little, from, that little door closing thing. Yeah. From ill-advised college Ill -advised activities. Drunken college dorm elevator <laughs> near-death pranks. Mm, no, electrical current makes my marrow tingle. Raul, I am so, so sorry. Manny, I knew you would 
Why is that door closed? Uh, it was the only way I, uh, uh, the wind? Oh. I love secret doors. Not picking that up. Hey, this is my room. Go use up the air in your own room. It's funny, the, the casting of, of Manny was, uh, it was tough because, um, you know, obviously you have, we were some, I wanted to hire somebody who was legitim legitimately Hispanic and not somebody putting on a fake accent. Right, oh, for sure. And normally in a sort of the casting process, you'd sit down with the, the project leader and you'd probably have five to ten candidates that you'd be looking at. And, and with Manny, we had two. And... Um, uh, Tony was more Humphrey Bogart, and the other the other actor was more uh, comedic. And I was terrified that Tim was going to go the comedic route because I thought it, Tony was the guy. And right. I, I remember printing out resumes for the two guys, and Tony had a lot more experience. And then there was a really cool picture of Tony taken from Havana, where he's sitting up at the bar, and he just looked cool. Yeah. And I made sure that went in too, and so just to help kind of. Uh, push it in the direction I wanted it to go. <laughs> That's great. It's just, it's the perfect voice. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's great. That home plumbing sprinkler system looks like it's about to fall apart. Not picking that up. I can't reach that high. Thanks for not shooting me. Look, I'm sorry. I should have trusted you. It's just that the past two years have been pretty tough, you know? What's in these cases? Take a look. It's all the double-end tickets Hector and Dom have stolen over the years. Each one stolen from a good soul, and now they just sit there. That's it. What? They just sit there. That's what's been bothering me. In the days when I was a hot salesman, I used to see double in tickets all the time, and they move. What do you mean they move? They become agitated around human souls, and the ticket that belongs to you will actually fly into your hand. But these tickets, and the tickets in that suitcase of Charlie's, it's like they're dead. Why would Hector and Domino be hoarding cases of counterfeit double in tickets? Now, all we have to do is wait for the room to fill up, and we'll just float on out of here. Well, this is disappointing. Not to me. We don't float, remember? You look like you could use a nice ocean cruise. Still my travel agent, eh? People in the old days were huge. Doesn't look like he'd enjoy a piggyback ride. That thing is definitely not my size. This must be the big chipper. You. What about the suitcases? Forget them. They're counterfeit. They wouldn't fit through this hole anyway. Let's go. Okay, you get the kids, and I'll meet you back here with the boat. What boat? Well, I'm working on that. Okay, Manny. I have to figure a way to launch that ship Gladys found. What I need is a giant stork to deliver that big baby right here. The uh, animation team was very green, and we're lucky to work under people like Pete and some other senior folks on the team. 
like Eric Ingerson and Mark Hamer. Um, we came out of school learning traditionally 2D animation and probably had about a month or two of work on Monkey Island 3, I think, which was still wow. semi-traditional. Uh, and then this was our first um, kind of interaction with uh, 3D and computers and we struggled it and was, watched Eric do the most complex things you could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it was all very new. And uh, I think we had a couple of consulting sessions. Uh, this was back when we were still kind of connected to ILM. And so we had uh, Kyle Balda, who a, was a LucasArts alum and, and at the time worked at, um, at ILM. He came over and gave us some 3D pointers at, at a, couple of, a couple of points. We had some special private sessions. I swear I'll get us a boat. Okay, Manny. It's the edge of the world, but not the edge I'm looking for. I could jump, but the odds of me hitting that boat are pretty slim. I don't have a long enough lever. Those look like my sister's curling iron. I was just going to say, like, those things always scared me. They, they are truly terrifying. Like the those curling iron? Grinder. No, the, oh, the, the, grinders. the grinders. The curling irons, to a lesser degree. <laughs> those are based on my sister's curling iron. No, you don't call them curling irons. Curlers. curlers. Based on my sister's curlers. Right. And my terrible fear of curlers. They're fearsome things. They must bring the core over here to be crushed. Either that or these are the biggest, meanest looking hair curlers I've ever seen. I don't have the strength to rip them out. Those things are dangerous. I'd be ground to bits. Now this, the, all that water is running in the Rebel Salt engine. <laughs> the game is running in the Jedi Knight engine and the... Uh, oh, that's right. All the stream videos from the Rebel Assault Salt engine. engine. That is right. So we're composing, compositing the Rebel Assault technology on top of Jedi Knight right. technology. And then all the Lua scripting for the gameplays. Is that what comprised the Grime engine? Which we never actually called the Grime engine at the time, but Brett wanted to call it the Grime engine. Oh, like that's grim. funny. And in, in later, he's been able to do enough interviews where he's called it the Grime engine that people just call it the Grime engine. Now, that's fine. It should have a name. Everything should. It's enorme. Ooh, I would, but my back. So this whole um, whole environment, I think, was worked on around the end of the game, and we had to bring a few other artists on oh, yeah, at the yeah. end in order to get it all done. Yeah. Now and then, I I kind of remember that towards the end, because it, it was just like a skeleton crew, because I think just the budget had gotten so big that uh, I just remember Pete and a few other people working on it for a couple months or something yeah. while, while all of us had to move on to, to other projects. I can't even imagine what was going through his head at this point because the, just the size of this game, being able to absorb it all yeah. before it's realized. And he, he always had a really good idea of where we were and what was going on. Yep. And we were talking earlier about how there really wasn't a schedule that I remember, an art schedule for this game. It almost mm -hmm. seemed like we just all sort of chose tasks and then we had Leslie sort of following up to make sure we were doing them in about as much time as they should take or not getting bogged down or stuck. This scoop looks heavier than my last ship. It's not a handheld device. It's not a handheld device. I can 
see why they don't give these chisels to the new guys. It's not a handheld device. Super, uh, another technical problem that was really interesting was the save load, because uh, I wanted to cut a bunch of corners on save load to just make it a little easier to implement. Um, and we had talked about things like you could only save and load, maybe, or when you load, it would load at the beginning of a room and um, back up content a little bit, or just do it where it was a little bit more convenient. And uh, Tim uh, really wanted a really high fidelity save load. And I remember trying to talk him out of it, and he threw the gauntlet down, and he was like, if Manny's in the middle of a line, and there's a puff of smoke hanging in the air, then, and I hit save, when he restores, he should pick up from the middle of that line where he was at, and that puff of smoke should be in the air. And I was like, all right, man, if, if that's what you want, that's what you're gonna get. And uh, it was a big pain. It took a lot of work to get it there. But that's the way the game shipped, and, uh, and that's kind of, uh, you know, with uh, controls and, and things like that, you know, Tim was pretty uncompromising and had a, had a vision of what he wanted this thing to be. And you know, as much as we were able, we were we we gave him what he wanted. I'm so glad to see you. Aww. I can't believe you got it to float. That was the easy part. The trick's gonna be busting through that big coral reef out there. Bust through a big coral reef, eh? Okay, give me a minute or two. <laughs> Tank, you're it! <laughs> I can't board without the others. <laughs> Think of a way to get through that reef yet? No. Did you? Ah! No. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Whoa! Tag <laughs> <Take> you <laughs> it! Whee! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
looks like crazy. Full speed ahead. What? Oh. So are you really going to bring me back and try to get your old job again? There's no job for me now, except to bring you and everyone else here to the end of the road. But if you aren't going to use me to get your job back, why did you spend all this time trying to find me? Meche, I... I needed to find you. I give you one job, Manny! And look at you, already screwing it up! <clears throat> I suppose you realize that this is gonna go down on your permanent record! So, once in a while, if there was a, if there was a solo part that we could um, get to re be recorded by a real person, um, we would do that, but... Um, I don't know if you remember, we were kind of under a lot of uh, schedule pressure with that. <laughs> I do remember some and people were like, uh, one oh. late night or two. There was a late night or two. And then there was like, you're spending $13,000 on live musicians? Are you crazy? <laughs> so we were lucky we could do what we could do at all, but... Um, and look, where are those yeah. guys today? I don't even remember their names. Um, here we are. Here, here we, we are, are talking about Grimm. Exactly. Those guys are all dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I, am, I hope they're dead. <laughs> I hope they're happy spending time with their families and no longer working on games. <laughs> Which I think actually is true. That's the squishiest looking periscope I've ever seen. I really prefer to use tongs when picking up octopus eyes. Hey, pull over, octopus. You're going too fast. It's hard to make them kiss because they have those. <laughs> they don't have lips. Yeah. They should have added like a, a like a knocking. Oh, sound. that would have been <laughs> funny. Awesome. Bones kissing. Yeah. Making out. Imagine what that sounds like with a bony face. <laughs> Domino's just the kind of guy to practice Oxford regulation boxing and then pull out a blade when it comes time to fight. I don't know any wrestling moves. I don't think my bare hands would be a match with that scythe of his. Doesn't look good for the kid. Look, Tom, I'm not gonna work for you. Oh, don't worry about that. You're fired. Just consider this your severance. Good. What are you doing away from your desk anyway? I'm sending this domino back to the bone pile. <laughs> Smart strategy, always let your boss win. You know, your name is Domino, but you're really just a pawn. Please, save the comic book one-liners for when you're winning. <laughs> just like with your selling, Manny, you got a weak attack and no follow-through. I'll stop any time you get tired. <clears throat> Just please stay down this time. Ah! At least at the Christmas party, you passed out before you really got hurt. <clears throat> Please, Manny, stop showing off for the girl. <clears throat> I don't 
don't believe you, Calavera. You're losing a fight, so you pick on one of my pets? Why aren't you more like me, Manny? I've been trying to show you how, but you don't listen. If you just adopt the proper attitude, just look what could happen to you. Name? Pugsy Poligiano, sir. Hmm. Waiting room number two. Next. Glories! Uh... Glories! Estás bien? Glories? Where'd you go this time? <laughs> 